Harper Collins and Harper Audio present Warriors Super Edition Blue Stars Prophecy by Aaron Hunter, performed by Lisa Flanagan. Prologue Blue Star skidded to a halt at the top of the slope. The stench of dogs hit her throat. Below, the ferns shook as dark shapes swarmed through the gully. Fireheart's orange pelt flashed like flame through the greenery. He was keeping a good distance between himself and the pack, but the lead dog was breaking away and closing fast on the Thunder Clan deputy. No, not that one. You cannot use him as prey. Blue Star flung herself down the slope. Gulping air, muscles burning, she weaved around the trees, her paws skidding on the leafy forest floor. She hurtled through a swath of ferns, running blind as the leaves whipped her face. The gorge was close by. She could hear the river crashing between the sheer gray walls. Would Fireheart really be able to lure the dog pack over the edge? What if the pack's leader caught him first? She erupted from the bracken and scrabbled to a stop in a clearing at the edge of the cliff. Leaves sprayed into the chasm as her paw slipped and slid. Oh, Star Clan, no! Fireheart was dangling from the glistening jaws of a huge dog. The Thunder Clan deputy struggled, spitting with fury. The dog shook him, its eyes shining with triumph, but its clumsy paws were skittering dangerously close to the edge of the gorge. I will not let you destroy my clan, Blue Star roared. She flung herself at Fireheart's tormentor, slamming head first into its flank. The dog dropped Fireheart and spun around in surprise. Blue Star crouched and unsheathed her claws. Blood roared in her ears, but she felt no fear. She had not felt this alive for moons. She lashed out at the dog's muzzle, but her claws raked empty air. The dog was sliding away from her. The ground beneath its hind legs was crumbling. Shards of stone showered down the steep face of the gorge as the dog's paws scrabbled to get a grip, but its blunt claws were slithering on the leaf-strewn forest floor as its haunches dragged its hind legs backward over the cliff. The pack thundered closer. Blue Star, Fireheart warned. But Blue Star didn't take her eyes from the pack leader. She was locked in its panicked gaze as dogs began to crash through the bracken behind her. The pack was upon them. Blue Star dug her claws into the soft earth as the air suddenly soured with fear. The lunging dogs had seen the gorge, and their howls turned to yelps as they skidded at its edge. Blue Star held her ground as a desperate yowl echoed down the chasm. The first dog had fallen. Its body thumped against the cliff, and there was a moment of quiet before she heard it splash into the roaring water below. Blue Star narrowed her eyes, still fixed on the pack leader. You should never have threatened Thunder Clan, she hissed. Suddenly, the dog stretched its head forward and grasped her foreleg in its jaws. She felt the ground slide beneath her as the dog dragged her with it over the edge. Wind roared around her, blasting her pelt as she fell. The river swirled and foamed below. She scrabbled desperately against the cold, wet air and struggled free of the dog just a moment before she hit the water. The freezing river knocked the breath from her body. Blind, she struggled against the current, fighting her way toward air, her heart gripped by panic. Goosefeather's prophecy burned in her mind. Water will destroy you. Her thick fur, heavy with water, dragged her down. The river tumbled all around her. She didn't know which way was up. Her lungs screamed for air. Terror scorched through her. She was going to drown, there in the foaming waters of the gorge. Don't give up. A meow sounded clear and familiar through the roar of the water. Oh, Cart? The father of her kits was murmuring in her ears. It's like running through the forest. Let your paws do the work. Raise your chin. Let the water carry you up. His voice seemed to lift her, calming her panic, and she found that her paws were churning steadily through the water. 
Her heart, tight with pain, slowed as she strained to raise her chin until at last the wind whipped her face. Coughing and gagging, she snatched a gulp of air. That's the way, Oakheart whispered in her ear. His voice sounded so gentle, so welcoming. Perhaps she should just let the river sweep her away into the softness of his fur. Blue Star swim, head for the bank. Oakheart's mew was sharp now. Our kits are waiting. Our kits? The thought of them hit her like a lightning bolt. You can't leave them without saying goodbye. Energy surged through Blue Star, and she began to fight once more. A dark shape buffeted her, knocking her underwater again, but she struggled to the surface, splattering as water filled her mouth and caught in her throat. The rolling body of a dog tumbled past her and was swept downstream. If a dog can't fight this current, how can I? The treetops blurred overhead as the river swirled her along. You can do it, Oakheart urged. Blue Star churned at the water, but her exhausted legs felt like sodden leaves, flailing uselessly. Suddenly, teeth grasped her scruff. Was Oakheart going to drag her to safety? Blue Star blinked water from her eyes long enough to glimpse orange fur. Fireheart. The ThunderClan deputy had gotten hold of her. Keep your head up, he growled through clenched jaws. Blue Star tried to help him, but her pelt was heavy, and her paws were too tired to fight the weight of water. Fireheart's teeth tore at her scruff as the water dragged her down. Then another body brushed hers. One of the dogs? More teeth bit her scruff. Paws clutched at her flanks, heaving her upward. She felt the strong, gentle movement of cats around her. Was Star Clan carrying her to its hunting grounds? Barely conscious, she let herself be dragged through the water until pebbles scraped her flank and she felt solid earth beneath her. Paws and teeth heaved her up the gritty shore and laid her on soft grass. Her chest felt as if it were packed with stones, making each breath a struggle. Her eyes stung, too filled with water to see. Blue Star? She recognized the mew of Mistyfoot. What about Stonefur? Is he here too? We're both here. A strong paw pressed against her flank. Oakheart had been right. Their kits had been waiting for her. Blue Star fought to open her eyes. She could just make out the shape of Stonefur. His wide shoulders were silhouetted against the green canopy of trees. So much like his father. Mistyfoot stood beside him, her sodden pelt clinging to her frame. Blue Star felt breath on her cheek. Is she okay? Came the voice of her daughter. Fireheart was leaning in. Blue Star, it's Fireheart. You're all right now. You're safe. Blue Star hardly heard him. She was gazing at her kits. You saved me, she murmured. Shh, don't try to talk, Mistyfoot urged. But there's so much to say. Blue Star stretched her muzzle forward. I, I want to tell you something. I want to ask you to forgive me for sending you away. As she coughed, water bubbled at her lips. But she forced herself to keep going. Oakheart promised me Graypool would be a good mother to you. She was. Stonefur meowed flatly. Blue Star flinched. I owe her so much. She wished she had more breath to explain. Oakheart, too, for mentoring you so well. Why hadn't she found a way to tell them this before? I watched you as you grew up, and I saw how much you had to give to the clan who adopted you. If I had made a different choice, you would have given all your strength to Thunder Clan. She shuddered, struggling for air. Forgive me. 
She stared at her kits. And time seemed to halt as she watched Mistyfoot and Stonefur exchange an uncertain glance. Please forgive me. She suffered a lot of pain for her choice. Fireheart pleaded for her. Please forgive her. Stop it. Forgiveness would mean nothing if it had to be dragged from them. She willed Fireheart to hold his tongue. Mistyfoot bent her head and licked Blue Star's cheek. We forgive you, Blue Star. We forgive you, Stonefur echoed. Blue Star closed her eyes as her two kits began to lap at her drenched pelt. It was the first time she had shared tongues with them since the snowy day she had left them with Oakheart. There was no more need to cling to her last life. Firestar would kindle a new flame and blaze through the forest in her place. ThunderClan was safe. She closed her eyes and gave way to dizzying blackness. Chapter One Shouldn't she have opened her eyes by now? Hush, Swift Breeze. She's only a day old. She'll open them when she's ready. Blue Kit felt the rasp of her mother's tongue on her flank and nestled closer to Moonflower's milk-warm belly. Snow Kit opened hers this morning, Swift Breeze reminded her. And my two had theirs open from almost the moment they were born. The she-cat's tail stirred her bedding. Leopard Kit and Patch Kit are natural warriors. A soft purr sounded from a third queen. Oh, Swift Breeze, we all know that no kit can compete with your two, Poppy Dawn gently teased. A small paw poked Blue Kit's side. Snow Kit? Blue Kit mewled with annoyance and snuggled closer to Moonflower. Come on, Blue Kit, Snow Kit whispered in her ear. There's so much to look at and I want to go outside, but Moonflower won't let me till you're ready. She'll open her eyes in her own time, Moonflower chided. Yes, in my own time, Blue Kid agreed. Waking, Blue Kid could feel the weight of her sister lying on top of her. Moonflower's belly rose and fell rhythmically beside them. Swift Breeze was snoring, and Poppy Dawn wheezed a little as she breathed. Blue Kit heard Leopard Kit and Patch Kit chattering outside. You be the mouse and I'll be the warrior, Patch Kit was ordering. I was the mouse last time, Leopard Kit retorted. Or not, was. A scuffle broke out, punctuated by squeaks of defiance. Watch where you're rolling, came the cross meow of a tom, silencing them for a moment. Okay, you be the warrior. Patch Kit agreed, but I bet you can't catch me. Warrior? Blue Kit wriggled out from under her sister. A new leaf breeze stirred the bramble walls and drifted through the gaps. The same fresh forest smell her father had carried in on his pelt when he'd visited. It chased away the stuffy smell of moss and milk and warm sleeping fur. Excitement made Blue Kit's claws twitch. I'm going to be a warrior. For the first time, she stretched open her eyes, blinking against the shafts of light that pierced the bramble roof. The nursery was huge. In darkness, the den had felt small and cozy, but now she could see the brambles arching high overhead with tiny patches of blue beyond. Poppy Dawn lay on her side near one wall, a dark red tabby with a long bushy tail. Blue Kit recognized her because she smelled different from Swift Breeze and Moonflower. There was no milk scent on her. She didn't have any kits yet. Swift Breeze, in a nest beside her, was hardly visible. Curled in a tight ball with her nose tucked under her tail, her tabby and white pelt blotchy against the bracken underneath. The most familiar scent of all came from behind. Wriggling around, Blue Kit gazed at her mother. Sunshine dappled Moonflower's silver gray pelt, rippling over the dark stripes that ran along her flank. Her striped face was narrow, and her ears tapered to gentle points. 
Do I look like her? Blue Kit looked over her shoulder at her own pelt. It was fluffy, not sleek like moonflowers, and was dark gray all over with no stripes. Not yet. Snow Kit, lying stretched on her back, was all white except for her gray ear tips. Snow Kit, Blue Kit breathed. What is it? Snow Kit blinked open her eyes. They were blue. Are mine blue? Blue Kit wondered. You've opened your eyes! Snow Kit leaped to her paws wide awake. Now we can go out of the nursery! Blue Kit spotted a hole in the bramble wall, just big enough for two kits to squeeze through. Patch Kit and Leopard Kit are already outside. Let's surprise them! Poppy Dawn raised her head. Don't go far, she murmured sleepily, before tucking her nose back under her tail. Where are Poppy Dawn's kits? Blue Kit whispered. They won't arrive for another two months, Snow Kit answered. Arrive? Blue Kit tipped her head to one side. Where from? Snow Kit was already heading for the hole, scrambling clumsily over Moonflower. Blue Kit tumbled after, her short legs uncertain as she slid down her mother's back and landed in the soft moss. The nest rustled, and Blue Kit felt a soft paw clamp her tail tip to the ground. Where do you think you are going? Moonflower was awake. Blue Kit turned and blinked at her mother. Outside. Moonflower's eyes glowed and a loud purr rolled in her throat. You've opened your eyes. She sounded relieved. I decided it was time, Blue Kit replied proudly. There, Swift Breeze, Moonflower turned, waking the tabby and white queen with her satisfied mew. I told you she'd do it when she was ready. Swift Breeze sat up and gave her paw a lick. Of course, I was only thinking of my own kits. They opened their eyes sooner. She swiped her paw across her muzzle, smoothing the fur on her nose. Moonflower turned back to her kits. So, now you're going out to see the world? Why not? Blue Kit mewed. Leopard Kit and Patch Kit are already out there. Leopard Kit and Patch Kit are five moons old, Moonflower told her. They're much bigger than you, so they're allowed to play outside. Blue Kit opened her eyes very wide. Is it dangerous? Moonflower shook her head. Not in the camp. Then we can go. Moonflower sighed, then leaned down to smooth Blue Kit's fur with her tongue. I suppose you have to leave the nursery sometime. She studied Snow Kit. Straighten your whiskers. Pride lit the queen's amber gaze. I want you to look perfect when you meet the clan. Snow Kit ran a licked paw over each spray of whiskers. Blue Kit looked up at her mother. Are you coming with us? Do you want me to? Blue Kit shook her head. We're going to surprise Patch Kit and Leopard Kit. Your first prey. Moonflower's whiskers twitched. Off you go then. Blue Kit bounced around and sprinted for the gap. Don't get under any cat's paws, Moonflower called after them as Blue Kit barged ahead of her sister and headed through the hole. And stay together. The brambles scraped Blue Kit's pelt as she wriggled out of the nursery. When she tumbled onto the ground beyond, sunshine stung her eyes. She blinked away the glare, and the camp opened out in front of her like a dream. A vast sandy clearing stretched away to a rock that cast a shadow so long it almost touched her paw tips. Two warriors sat beneath the rock, sharing prey beside a clump of nettles. Beyond them lay a fallen tree, its tangled branches folded on the ground like a heap of skinny, hairless legs. Several tail lengths away from the nursery, a wide, low bush spread its branches over the ground. Ferns crowded a corner at the nursery's other side, and behind them rose a barrier of gorse so tall that Blue Kit had to crane her neck to see the top. Excitement thrilled through her. 
This was her territory. Her paws prickled. Would she ever know her way around? There was no sign of Patch Kit or Leopard Kit. Where have they gone? She called to Snow Kit. Snow Kit was staring around the camp. I don't know, she meowed absently. Look at that prey! She was staring at a heap of birds and mice at the side of the clearing. It was topped by a fat, fluffy squirrel. The fresh kill pile! Blue Kit bounced toward it, her nose twitching. She'd heard the queens in the nursery talking about prey, and she'd smelled squirrel on her mother's fur. What would it taste like? Thrusting her nose into the pile, she tried to sink her claws into a small creature with short brown fur and a long, thin tail. Watch out! Snow Kit's warning came too late. Blue Kit's paws buckled as the plump squirrel rolled off the top of the pile and flattened her. Oof! Purrs of amusement erupted from the two warriors beside the nettle patch. I've never seen fresh kill attack a cat before, meowed one of them. Careful, warned the other warrior. All that fluff might choke you. Hot with embarrassment, Blue Kid wriggled out from under the squirrel and stared fiercely at the warriors. It just fell on me. She didn't want to be remembered as the kit who was jumped on by a dead squirrel. Hey, you two. Blue Kit recognized Patch Kit from his nursery scent as he padded out from behind the nursery. Does your mother know you're outside? Of course. Blue Kit spun around to see her den mate for the first time. Oh. She hadn't expected Patch Kit to be so big. His black and white fur was smooth like a warrior's, and she had to tip her head back to look up at him. She stretched her legs, trying to appear taller. Leopard Kit scampered after her brother, swiping playfully at his tail. Her black coat shone in the sunshine. She stopped and stared in delight when she saw Blue Kit and Snow Kit. You've opened your eyes. Blue Kit licked her chest, trying to smooth down her fluffy fur and wishing her pelt were as sleek as theirs. We can show you around, Leopard Kit mewed excitedly. Snow Kit bounced around the older Kit. Yes, please. Blue Kit flicked her tail crossly. She didn't want to be shown her territory. She wanted to explore it for herself. But Leopard Kit was already trotting toward the wide patch of ferns near the gorse barrier. This is the apprentice's den, she called over her shoulder. We'll be sleeping there in a moon. Snow Kit raced after her. Are you coming? Patch Kit nudged Blue Kit. Blue Kit was gazing back at the nursery. Won't you miss your old nest? She felt a sudden flicker of anxiety. She liked sleeping next to Moonflower. I can't wait to move into my new den, Patch Kit yowled as he darted toward the apprentice's den. It'll be great to be able to talk without Swift Breeze telling us to be quiet and go to sleep. As Blue Kit hurried after him, the ferns trembled and a tortoiseshell face poked out between the green fronds. Once you start your training, yawned the sleepy-looking apprentice, you'll be glad to get some sleep. Hello, Dapplepaw. Patchkit skittered to a halt outside the den as the tortoiseshell she-cat stretched, half in and half out of the bush. Blue Kit stared at Dapplepaw's pelt, thick and shiny. The muscles on the she-cat's shoulders rippled as she sprang from the ferns and landed beside Patchkit. Suddenly, Blue Kit's den mate didn't seem so big after all. We're showing Blue Kit and Snow Kit around the camp, Leopard Kit announced. It's their first time out. Don't forget to show them the dirt place, Dapplepaw joked. Whitepaw was complaining only this morning about cleaning out the nursery. The place has been filled with kits for moons, and there's more on the way. Blue Kit lifted her chin. Snow Kit and I can keep our nest clean now, she declared. Dapplepaw's whiskers quivered. I'll tell Whitepaw when she gets back from hunting. I'm sure she'll be delighted to hear it. Is she teasing? Blue Kit narrowed her eyes. I can't wait to go hunting, 
patch kit dropped into a crouch, his tail weaving like a snake. Quick as the wind, Dapplepaw pinned it down with her tail. Don't forget to keep your tail still, or the prey will hear you swishing up the leaves. Patchkit pulled his tail free and straightened it out, flattening it to the ground. Snowkit stifled a purr. It sticks out like a twig, she whispered in Blue Kit's ear. Blue Kit was watching too intently to reply. She studied how Patchkit had pressed his chest to the ground, how he'd unsheathed his claws and tucked his hind paws right under his body. I'm going to be the best hunter ThunderClan has ever seen, she vowed. Not bad, Dapplepaw congratulated Patchkit, then glanced at Leopardkit. Let's see your hunting crouch. Leopardkit instantly dropped and pressed her belly to the ground. Blue Kit longed to try it but not until she'd practiced by herself. Come on, let's leave them to it, she whispered to Snowkit. Snowkit stared at her in surprise. Leave them? Let's explore by ourselves. Blue Kit saw a chance to slip away unnoticed. But it's fun hanging out with- Blue Kit didn't hear anymore. She was already backing away. Glancing over her shoulder, she spotted a low spreading bush beside the nursery. Patch Kit and Leopard Kit wouldn't find them there. She spun around and dashed for the bush, diving under a branch. As she caught her breath, she tasted lots and lots of different scents clinging to the leaves. How many cats were there in ThunderClan? Did they really all fit in the camp? The branches shook, and Snow Kit crashed in after her. I thought you weren't coming, Blue Kit squeaked in surprise. Moonflower told us to stay together, Snow Kit reminded her. Together they peeped out to see if Leopard Kit, Patch Kit, and Dapplepaw had noticed their escape. The three cats were staring at the nursery, looking puzzled. Dapplepaw shrugged. They must have gone back to their nest. Never mind, Patch Kit paced around Dapplepaw. Now you can take us to the Sandy Hollow like you promised. Sandy Hollow? What's that? Blue Kit suddenly wished she'd stayed with the others. I never promised, Dapplepaw protested. We'll be in trouble if we get caught, Leopard Kit warned. We're not supposed to leave the camp until we're apprentices, remember? Then we won't get caught, Patch Kit mewed. Dapplepaw glanced uncertainly around the clearing. I'll take you to the edge of the ravine, she offered. But that's all. Jealousy burned Blue Kit's pelt as she watched Dapplepaw lead Leopard Kit and Patch Kit toward the gorse barrier and disappear through a gap at the base. Maybe we can follow them and see where they go. Suddenly a muzzle nudged her hindquarters and sent her skidding out from her hiding place. Her sister tumbled after her and a gray tabby face peered out at them from under the leaves. What are you doing here? This is the warrior's den. S sorry, Snow Kit backed away. Blue Kit faced the warrior. How were we supposed to know? She protested. Do warriors have a special scent or something? The tabby Tom narrowed his eyes. Are you Moonflower's kits? Snow Kit's pelt ruffled and she looked down at her paws. Blue Kit lifted her chin. She wasn't scared of the grouchy warrior. Yes, I'm Blue Kit, and this is my sister, Snow Kit. The tabby slid from under the bush and straightened up. He was even bigger than Dapplepaw. Blue Kit took a step back. I'm Stone Pelt, meowed the gray tom. Are you looking for Stormtail? Snow Kit glanced up eagerly. Is he here? He's out hunting. We weren't looking for him, actually, Blue Kit told the warrior, even though she would have liked to see her father now that her eyes had opened. We were hiding from Patch Kit and Leopard Kit. Hide and seek, I suppose, Stone Pelt sighed. No, Blue Kit corrected him. They were trying to show us around the camp, but we wanted to explore it for ourselves. Stonepelt flicked his tail. 
A good warrior learns from his clanmates. We, we thought it would be more fun on our own, Snowkit blurted out. The warrior's pelt bristled. Well, it's no fun being woken from a well-earned rest by a stampede of kits. We're sorry, Snowpelt apologized. We didn't realize. That's what happens when kits are left to wander around by themselves. Snowpelt snorted and turned his gaze toward the fresh kill pile. Now that I'm awake, I might as well eat. With a flick of his tail, the warrior headed across the clearing, leaving the two kits alone. Snow Kit turned on Blue Kit. Did you have to pick the warrior's den to hide in? She mewed crossly. How was I supposed to know? Blue Kit snapped back. We would have known if we'd stayed with Patch Kit. Blue Kit flicked her ears. Now they knew where the apprentice's den was and the warrior's. They had wanted to explore the camp, hadn't they? She gazed across the clearing, waiting for her eyes to stop being blurry. She hadn't tried to see this far away yet. As the rock at the opposite end of the clearing came into focus, she noticed scuffed earth around the base. Paw prints led into the shadows and disappeared, where a patch of lichen hung at one side. Where did they lead? Forgetting that she was cross with Snow Kit, Blue Kit meowed, follow me. She ran over to the lichen, then reached out and prodded it with her paw. It swung under her touch and then gave way. Her paw sank through the brush and into empty space. There's a gap. Excited, Blue Kit pushed her way through and found herself in a quiet cove. Its floor and walls were smooth, and although no cat was there, a nest of moss lay at one side. It's a den, she hissed back through the lichen to Snow Kit. It's Pine Star's den, replied a voice that wasn't her sister's. Blue Kit froze for a moment, then backed cautiously out of the cave. Was she in trouble again? A pale silver tom with bright amber eyes was sitting beside Snow Kit. Hello, Blue Kit. Blue Kit tilted her head. How do you know my name? She asked. I was at your kidding the tom told her. I'm Featherwhisker, the medicine cat's apprentice. He nodded toward Pine Star's den. You shouldn't go in there unless you've been invited. His mew was soft, but grave. I didn't realize it was his den. I just wondered what was behind the lichen. Blue Kit looked down at her paws. Are you going to tell Pine Star? Yes. Blue Kit's heart lurched. It's better that I tell him. He'll smell your scent anyway, Feather Whisker explained. Blue Kit looked up at him anxiously. Would Pine Star say she couldn't be a warrior now? Don't worry, Feather Whisker assured her. He won't be angry. He'll probably admire your curiosity. Can I go and look too then? Snow Kit mewed. Feather Whisker purred. One kit's scent will smell like curiosity, he told her. Two kit's scents will smell like nosiness. Snow Kit's tail drooped. I'm sure you'll get a chance to see inside one day, Feather Whisker promised. Why don't I take you to meet the elders instead? They like meeting the new kits. Again, they were to be shown around. Annoyance prickled in Blue Kit's pelt, but she reminded herself what Stone Pelt had said. A good warrior learns from her clanmates. Feather Whisker led them to the fallen tree and squeezed under a jutting branch. Blue Kit trotted after, Snow Kit at her heels. Grass, ferns, and moss sprouted from every crevice in the tangle of wood, turning the decaying bark green with new leaf freshness. Blue Kit followed Feather Whisker as he weaved his way through a maze of twigs until he reached an open space among the tangled branches. A mangy brown tom was lying with his back to the fallen trunk, while a tortoiseshell she cat groomed his ears with her tongue. A second tom, his orange pelt flecked with white, was eating a mouse at the other end of the den. The tortoiseshell looked up as Feather Whisker entered. Have you brought mouse bile? She looked hopeful.
Mumblefoot's got another tick. He insists on hunting every day, the orange Tom commented. He's bound to get ticks. The day I stop hunting, Weed Whisker, is the day you can sit vigil for me, meowed Mumblefoot. Weed Whisker took another bite of his mouse. I'll never stop hunting either, he muttered with his mouth full. There aren't enough apprentices to keep us fed these days. Patchkit and Leopardkit will be starting their training soon, Feather Whisker reminded them. And we've got another pair on the way to becoming apprentices. He stepped aside, revealing Blue Kit and Snow Kit. Weed Whisker looked up from his mouse. Mumblefoot sat up, pricking his ears. Kits! The tortoiseshell she-cat's eyes brightened, and she hurried forward and gave Blue Kit a soggy lick on her cheek. Blue Kit ducked away, rubbing her wet face with her paw, then stifled a purr as Snow Kit received the same welcome. It's their first time out of the nursery lark song, Feather Whisker explained. I caught them trying to make a nest in Pine Star's den. We were not, Blue Kit started to object. Don't take any notice of Feather Whisker, Lark Song interrupted. He teases all the cats. It's one of the privileges of being Medicine Cat. Medicine Cat Apprentice, Feather Whisker corrected her. Ah, huh. Mumblefoot wrapped his tail over his paws. Which means you do all of Goose Feather's duties while that lazy old badger pretends to look for herbs. Hush, Lark Song looked sternly at her denmate. Goose Feather does his best. Mumblefoot snorted. What herb was he supposedly collecting this morning? He asked Feather Whisker. The medicine cat apprentice twitched his ears. Comfrey. Well, I saw him sunning himself by the owl tree fast asleep. His snoring was scaring the prey. He flicked his tail toward the morsel that Weed Whisker was enjoying. It took me an age to find that. Goose Feather has taught me a lot, Feather Whisker said in defense of his mentor. And there's no herb in the forest he doesn't know how to use. If he can be bothered to pick them, Mumblefoot muttered. Feather Whisker glanced at Blue Kit and Leopard Kit. Take no notice, he meowed. Goose Feather and Mumblefoot have never seen eye to eye. And you shouldn't be saying such things, Mumblefoot. Lark Song scolded. You know Goosefeather is their kin. He is? Blue Kit blinked at the tortoiseshell. He was your mother's litter mate, Lark Song explained. She swept Blue Kit and Snow Kit forward with her tail. Come and tell us all about yourselves. My name is Blue Kit, and this is my sister, Snow Kit. Our mother is Moonflower, and our father is Stormtail, Blue Kit chirped. And today's the first time we've been out of the nursery. Weed Whisker licked his lips as he swallowed the last of the mouse. Welcome to the clan, little ones. I'm sure you'll be up to trouble in no time. Kits can't seem to help themselves. Blue Kit pricked her ears. Have Leopard Kit and Patch Kit been in trouble? Lark Song purred. I don't know a kit who hasn't. Relief warmed Blue Kit's belly. She didn't want to be the only one who got things wrong, like having a squirrel fall on my head. It's about time Pine Star made those two apprentices, Mumblefoot croaked. They have too much time on their paws. Every time I go to the fresh kill pile, I trip over one of them kicking up dust with some silly game or other. I'll ask Swift Breeze if I can take them herb gathering in the forest tomorrow, Feather Whisker suggested. That should keep them busy. Blue Kit's eyes grew wide. In the forest? She echoed. Feather Whisker nodded. We won't go far from camp. That must be where Dapplepaw was taking Patch Kit and Leopard Kit. Blue Kit wondered how much more there was beyond the clearing in the dens. Beside her, Snow Kit yawned. You'd better be getting them back to their mother, Lark Song advised. Snow Kit looks like she's going to fall asleep on her paws. Blue Kit turned to see her sister's eyes drooping. She suddenly realized that her own legs ached and her belly was rumbling. But she didn't want to leave. She wanted to learn more. 
What did Mumblefoot's tick look like? Where was Goosefeather now? Come on. Featherwhisker began to usher them out of the den. How can we learn anything back in the nursery? Blue Kid objected. You'll learn a lot more once you've rested, Larksong meowed. Come back and see us soon, Weed Whisker called. Blue Kit stumbled as they crossed the clearing. Though her mind whirled with questions, her paws were clumsy with fatigue. She felt relieved when Feather Whisker nudged her into the nursery. What did you see, little one? Moonflower asked as Blue Kit snuggled down beside her mother with Snow Kit. Everything, Blue Kit yawned. Moonflower purred. Not everything, my darling. Blue Kit closed her eyes as her mother went on softly. There's a whole forest for you to explore. And even that is just part of the clan's territories. There are lands beyond. Mother Mouth, High Stones, and even farther. How far does the world stretch? Snow Kit murmured sleepily. Only Star Clan knows. Moonflower replied. Blue Kit imagined trees and bracken and nettles and gorse, stretching far beyond the camp into an endless sky. But my legs aren't long enough to travel that far, she protested. As her visions faded into dreams, she heard her mother's voice continue. They'll grow, my sweet, until one day they'll be strong enough to walk the whole world. Chapter Two Blue Kit watched Snow Kit's tail flick enticingly and pushed away the urge to leap on it and pin it to the ground. She didn't dare risk getting her pelt dusty. And remember, Moonflower said, giving Blue Kit's ears another wash. Sit up straight and be polite. Blue Kit rolled her eyes. The three of them were waiting at the edge of the clearing. It'll be the first time Stormtail's seen you since you opened your eyes. Moonflower reminded them unnecessarily. Blue Kit's belly had been knotted with excitement all morning. She wanted her father to see that she wasn't a tiny mewling kit anymore. Moonflower glanced at the gorse barrier. He promised he'd be back from hunting by sun high. Blue Kit kept her paws rooted to the ground. It was hard sitting still when the camp was so busy with new smells and sights. Mumblefoot and Larksong had come out of the elder's den. Feather Whisker was padding toward them with a ball of moss dangling from his jaws. Blue Kit guessed there was something stinky in it, because he was wrinkling his nose as though he were carrying fox dung. Beside the nettle patch, a large tom with a pelt as fiery as the sun was sharing prey with three warriors. Is that Sunfall? Blue Kit asked. Yes? Moonflower had begun grooming Snow Kit. And that's Robin Wing, Tawny Spots, and Fuzzy Pelt with him. She meowed between licks. Oh, and Thrush Pelt has just come out of the warrior's den. Snow Kit fidgeted beneath her mother's tongue, complaining to Blue Kit, did she wash you this hard? But Blue Kit hardly heard. She was too busy gazing at the warriors. She wanted to memorize Robin Wing's brown pelt so she could always pick her out from the others in a battle. Tawny spots would be harder to make out, she decided, because of his pale gray tabby fur. But his ears had tufts on the tips. She'd remember that. Fuzzy pelt would be easy to recognize anywhere. His black fur stuck out like a hedgehog's bristles. Thrush pelt was sandy gray, like the pebbles she and Snow Kit played with in the nursery. He had bright green eyes and a splash of white on his chest that looked like a fluffy cloud. He was much smaller than the others. Didn't Thrush Pelt grow properly? Blue Kit mewed to her mother. Moonflower purred. No, little one, he's just the youngest warrior. He received his name only a quarter moon ago. He'll grow, you'll see. The gorse barrier swished and Blue Kit glanced around. Was it Stormtail? Disappointment hit her when Stonepelt padded into the camp with a bird in his jaws. She shuffled her paws, hoping he wouldn't notice her. 
She wasn't sure if he'd forgiven her for crashing into the warrior's den. That was a sneaky move, Dapplepaw yowled on the other side of the clearing. She rolled away from Whitepaw and leaped to her paws. The two she-cats were practicing battle moves beside the tree stump. Whitepaw shook out her fur. Not sneaky, pure skill. She stared at her denmate crossly, her cloudy eye glinting in the sunshine. Blue Kit knew she couldn't see out of that eye, but she could hear so well that it was impossible to creep up on her. Blue Kit and Snow Kit had tried several times. Lucky hit, Dapplepaw retorted. Patch Kit could do better. Where was Patch Kit? Blue Kit scanned the clearing. There. Leopard Kit and Patch Kit were crouching outside the warrior's den, glancing at each other as if they were planning something. What were they up to? I'm clean enough. Blue Kit's attention snapped back to her sister as Snow Kit ducked away from their mother's tongue. Moonflower sat back. You look lovely. Snow Kit snorted and ruffled the wet fur around her ears with her paw. Blue Kit puffed out her chest and lined her paws smartly in front of her. Please let Stormtail be proud of me. Moonflower had told them over and over what a great warrior their father was. How he was brave and good at fighting and one of the best hunters in ThunderClan. I hope I grow up to be like him. Why couldn't Stormtail come to the nursery to see us? Snow Kit whined. Adderfang's always coming to the nursery to see Patch Kit and Leopard Kit. He bought them a mouse last time. Your father came to see you as soon as you were born. Moonflower hooked her paw around Snow Kit's waving tail and wrapped it neatly over her paws. He's a very important warrior. He doesn't have time to bring you treats. She stepped back and looked her kits over once more. Besides, you're not big enough to eat mice yet. Blue Kit scrunched up her eyes as she glanced at the sun. It was almost directly overhead. Stormtail would be there soon. She twisted to see the gorse barrier. She knew the warrior patrol would come through the gap in the middle. Patch Kit had been telling her about clan life, about hunting patrols and border patrols. He had explained how a warrior hunts first for the clan and only then for himself. Blue Kit was determined that she would always make sure her clan was well fed, even if she had to starve to do it. Moonflower stiffened, her nose twitching. He's here. Where? Snow Kit leaped up and spun around, spraying dust over Blue Kit's pelt. Sit down, Moonflower ordered. As Snow Kit quickly sat down and wrapped her tail back over her paws, Blue Kit saw the gorse barrier tremble. A dark brown tabby padded through the entrance with a thrush in his jaws, followed by a pale tabby she-cat. Who's that? Blue Kit was impressed by the two voles swinging from the tabby's jaws. The tom is sparrow pelt, and the she-cat is speckletail. Moonflower pricked her ears. There he is. A large gray tom followed Speckletail into camp. His shoulders brushed the gorse, making the spikes quiver. He held his broad head high and his chin up, and his blue eyes shone like stars. In his jaws was the largest squirrel Blue Kit had seen yet. Look what he's brought us to play with, Snow Kit gasped. That's not for us, silly, Blue Kit whispered remembering what Patch Kit had told her. It's for the whole clan. And we'll be eating it, not playing with it, Moonflower put in sternly. Snow Kit's shoulders slumped as she watched her father follow his patrol to the fresh kill pile and lay the squirrel alongside the other prey. Then he turned and looked around the camp. Sit up straight, Moonflower hissed. Blue Kit thought if she sat up any straighter, she'd topple over backward, but she held herself as stiffly as she could until Stormtail's gaze finally reached them. A purr rumbled in her mother's throat. Stormtail. Moonflower beckoned him towards Snow Kit and Blue Kit with her tail. Come and meet your kits. Stormtail padded toward them and halted. 
They look better with their eyes open, he commented. His mew rumbled so deeply it sounded more like a growl. Do you see? Moonflower prompted. They both have blue eyes like you. Yes, Blue Kit stretched her eyes wider so her father could admire them. But he hardly seemed to glance at her before he turned back to Moonflower. They look like they'll make good warriors. Of course they will, Moonflower purred. They're your kits. Blue Kit stepped forward. Was it hard to catch that squirrel? She wanted Stormtail to look at her again. He might notice how much her pelt was like his. He looked down at her and blinked. Fat squirrels are easy to catch. Will you teach us how to catch squirrels? Snow Kit asked, her tail stirring up the dust behind her. Your mentors will teach you, Stormtail replied. I hope Pine Star chooses well for you. Who would he choose? As Blue Kit's gaze wandered to the warrior's den, the branches quivered, and Adderfang padded out. With mews of delight, Leopard Kit and Patch Kit pounced on him. Leopard Kit clung to her father's tail while Patch Kit landed squarely on his shoulders. Adderfang staggered, and with an exaggerated grunt of surprise, collapsed dramatically to the ground. Leopard Kit and Patch Kit leaped onto his belly, squeaking. But Adderfang tumbled them off with a purr and chased them away behind the den. Stormtail glanced toward the commotion, his ears twitching. Blue Kit thought perhaps he was imagining playing with his own kits like that once he got to know them better. Pine Star has asked me to share prey with him, Stormtail told Moonflower. Blue Kit blinked. Now? Is he leaving already? Can we come with you? Stormtail's gaze flashed toward her, and she flinched when she saw the mixture of alarm and discomfort in his eyes. Doesn't he like us? Kits should stay near the nursery, he muttered. Blue Kit's heart sunk as he turned to pad away, then swelled with hope when he paused and looked back over his shoulder. Has he changed his mind? Stonepell told me you woke him up yesterday, he growled. Stay out of the warrior's den. He swung his head around and walked off. Blue Kit stared after him, hollow with disappointment. Moonflower smoothed her tail along Blue Kit's ruffled flank. Stormtail was only giving you advice, she meowed, so you'll know better next time. Blue Kit stared at her paws, wishing she'd never made such a stupid mistake. Snow Kit was skipping around her mother. Of course we'll know better next time. Does he think we're mouse-brained? She stopped and blinked. He must be a really, really important warrior if Pine Star wants to share prey with him. He is. Moonflower watched as Stormtail picked up the squirrel he'd caught and carried it to the Thunder Clan leader. Then she looked at Blue Kit, her eyes warm. He'll probably have more time later. Blue Kit lifted her chin. He said we'd make good warriors. Secretly vowing to prove him right, she pushed away the empty feeling in the pit of her stomach. Moonflower. A mew of greeting startled Blue Kit. She turned to see a speckled gray tom with pale blue eyes ambling out from a tunnel of ferns. Did the great warrior meet his kits? Moonflower narrowed her eyes. Of course. Snow Kit's eyes lit up. Are you Goose Feather? How did you guess? That's the medicine cat's den, isn't it? Snow Kit pointed her nose toward the fern tunnel. So you must be. The Tom sat down. How do you know I wasn't just visiting Goose Feather? He sniffed. Then we'd have seen you go in, Snow Kit answered. We've been sitting here for ages. Really? Goosefeather looked at Moonflower. Moonflower's tail flicked. Blue Kit sniffed the medicine cat. You smell like feather whisker. The tang of strange plants clung to his pelt along with the scent of musty bedding. He says you know the name of every herb in the forest. I do. 
Goosefeather began washing his face. Snowkit pushed past her. Mumblefoot says you- Let's not worry about what Mumblefoot says. Moonflower silenced her daughter. Goosefeather stopped washing, his eyes twinkling. I'm always curious about anything Mumblefoot has to say. Blue Kit weaved around her sister, drawing her tail across Snow Kit's mouth. He says you go out picking herbs nearly every day, she mewed. A purr rumbled in Goosefeather's throat. This one's smart. I am too, Snow Kit insisted. Of course. Goosefeather's whiskers twitched. Your Moonflower's Kit, and she's the smartest cat I know. His gaze flicked briefly to Stormtail. About most things, anyway. He rolled onto his back and began rubbing his shoulders against the warm, rough earth. It's good to see New Leaf again. Blue Kit liked this Tom. He was funny and friendly. She was glad they were kin. What else do you do? Snow Kit asked eagerly. Goosefeather sat up and smoothed his whiskers with a paw. Apart from keeping the whole clan healthy? Blue Kit heard her mother sigh. Wasn't she proud of her litter mate? I interpret signs from Star Clan, Goosefeather went on. Blue Kit pricked her ears. What sort of signs? Goosefeather shrugged. The clouds, for example. Blue Kit scrunched her eyes and looked up. The bright blue sky was encircled by trees and flecked with soft white clouds scudding fast overhead. Goosefeather cleared his throat. I can tell just by looking that Star Clan sees kits hurrying toward becoming paws. A mottled tabby Tom, padding by, glanced sideways at the medicine cat. Goosefeather nodded at the Tom. Hello, Adderfang. Another prophecy? Adderfang meowed archly. Blue Kit blinked at the warrior. Didn't he believe in prophecies? Snow Kit could hardly keep her paws still. Kit's becoming paws? Does that mean us? It might, Goosefeather meowed. Adderfang snorted as he padded away. Blue Kit tilted her head. How do you know Star Clan means the message for you and not some other clan? It comes with experience. Goosefeather turned his muzzle toward the fern tunnel. Do you want to see the medicine den? Blue Kit plucked at the ground. Oh, yes, please. It was the one part of the camp she hadn't seen yet. Moonflower, Pine Star called to the queen. Coming. Moonflower glanced around uncertainly at Goosefeather. Can you manage these two by yourself for a moment? We don't need managing, Blue Kit thought indignantly. Of course, Goosefeather meowed. As Moonflower headed away to join Stormtail and Pine Star, Goosefeather led Blue Kit and Snow Kit through the cool green tunnel of ferns and into a grassy clearing with a small pool at one edge. The tang of herbs filled the air and the grass was specked with stray bits of leaves that Blue Kit didn't recognize. Ferns closed in on every side, except for one where a tall rock stood, split down the middle by a crack wide enough for a cat to make its den inside. A croaking mew called from an opening in the ferns. Small ear is recovering from an adder bite, Goosefeather explained as he padded toward the patient, hidden inside the soft green walls. Luckily, it was a small adder, but it'll be another day or two before the poison's out of his system. He disappeared through the ferns. I won't be long. Come on, Snow Kit whispered, shaking a loose piece of leaf from her paw. Let's look inside that rock. Blue Kit hesitated. Stormtail had just told her not to explore places she didn't belong. It's okay, Snow Kit encouraged. Goosefeather asked us to come and see his den. Blue Kit glanced at the quivering stalks where the medicine cat had disappeared. I guess, she trotted after Snow Kit to the dark opening in the rock. I'll go first. Snow Kit's white pelt was swallowed by shadow as she disappeared into the den. Blue Kit followed, blinking against the sudden darkness. 
pungent odors instantly filled her nose and mouth. Look at all these herbs, Snow Kit squeaked. Blue Kit stretched her eyes wide, adjusting to the dim light filtering from the entrance, until she saw Snow Kit sniffing among the piles of leaves and seeds along the wall of the den. Snow Kit pawed out a dark green leaf. I wonder what this is for. Blue Kit sniffed at it gingerly, wrinkling her nose at the sour smell. Bet you wouldn't eat it, Snow Kit goaded. Blue Kit stepped back, blinking. Scaredy mouse? I'm not a scaredy mouse. Anything but that. Okay, I'll eat it. Leaning down, she bit into the leaf. It felt furry on her tongue and tasted so bitter it made her gag. Spitting it out, she licked her paws, trying to rub off the taste. That's disgusting. Snow Kit snorted with laughter. Okay, Smarty Paws, your turn. Crossly, Blue Kit brushed her paw across a pile of tiny black seeds, sending them spilling across the den floor. Try one of those. Okay. Snow Kit ducked her head and lapped up two of the seeds, swallowed them, then licked her lips. Delicious, she announced, her eyes shining. What are you two doing? Moonflower's screech made both kits jump. The queen grabbed Blue Kit by the scruff and tossed her into the grassy clearing. She dragged Snow Kit out after her. Did you eat anything in there? Moonflower demanded, her eyes wild with panic. Blue Kit stared back at her, words sticking in her throat. Did you? Moonflower growled. I, I spat mine out, Blue Kit stammered. She glanced nervously at Snow Kit as Moonflower's gaze swung toward her sister. What about you? Snow Kit stared at her paws. I swallowed something, she mumbled. Goose feather! The medicine cat poked his head out of Small Ear's nest. What? The kits were in your den and Snow Kit has swallowed something. Goose Feather blinked. He hopped out from the fern nest and hurried across the grass. Find out what it was, Moonflower spat. But Goose Feather was already in his den. He rushed out a moment later. It looks like they've been at the poppy seeds, he meowed. Blue Kit hung her head. She should never have dared Snow Kit. How many did you swallow? Goose Feather urged, his eyes round and dark. Two, Snow Kit mewed in a very small voice. Goose Feather sat down with a sigh. She'll be fine, he breathed. It'll just make her sleep. Just make her sleep, Moonflower's pelt was bristling. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure, Goose Feather snapped. Take her back to the nursery and let her sleep it off. You don't want to keep her here so you can watch her? Moonflower prompted, flicking her tail. You'll probably do a better job watching her than me, Goose Feather meowed. I've got Small Ear to keep an eye on. Moonflower snorted. Come on. She nudged Snow Kit toward the fern tunnel. Blue Kit hurried after. She'll be fine, Goose Feather called after her. She'd better be, Moonflower muttered darkly. As Moonflower marched them across the clearing, Blue Kit was horribly aware of the fear and anger crackling in her mother's pelt. Stupid Tom, muttered the queen. How in Starkland did he become a medicine cat in the first place? Guilt twisted in Blue Kit's belly. She had dared Snow Kit to eat the poppy seeds. Don't ever go into a medicine cat's den again, Moonflower scolded. In fact, stay away from the medicine clearing altogether. But what if, Blue Kit began, don't argue. As they reached the nursery, Moonflower picked Snow Kit up by the scruff and bundled her through the entrance. Blue Kit scrambled after her sister before Moonflower could do the same to her. Why was her mother so angry at Goose Feather? It was Snow Kit who ate the poppy seeds. I dared her. Blue Kit sat at the edge of their nest, her pelt prickling with alarm as Snow Kit curled into the moss. Her littermate's eyes already had a glazed, sleepy look. 
Moonflower lay down and began to lap briskly at Snow Kit's fur. Swift Breeze stirred in her nest. What's wrong? Goose Feather let Snow Kit eat poppy seeds. Moonflower's eyes were dark with worry. Poppy Dawn sat up. He did what? Blue Kit felt hot with shame. It wasn't Goose Feather's fault. If anybody was to blame, it was her. Goose Feather didn't even know we were in his den, she pointed out. He should have known. He should have warned you. Moonflower sniffed at Snow Kit, who was already fast asleep. Imagine turning your tail on two young kits with all those herbs about. It's a shame Feather Whisker wasn't there, Swift Breeze put in. He'd have kept an eye on them. Moonflower began washing Snow Kit again, this time more gently. Blue Kit could smell the fear on her mother's pelt. Her own fur prickled. She won't die, will she? Poppy Dawn padded from her nest and pressed her muzzle against Blue Kit's cheek. Don't worry, little one. The queen glanced at Moonflower. How many did she eat? She whispered. Two. Poppy Dawn sighed. She'll be fine after a good sleep, she promised. Please, Star Clan, let her be okay. Blue Kit's tail quivered. Guilt pulsed through her as she crouched stiffly at the edge of the nest. Don't worry, Blue Kit. Moonflower drew her into the moss with her tail. I'll watch over her. You go to sleep. Blue Kit closed her eyes, but she couldn't imagine sleeping until she knew Snow Kit was okay. I'll never let her go into Goose Feather's den again. Let all cats old enough to fetch their own prey gather beneath high rock. Pine Star's call woke Blue Kit. She scrambled to her paws, excited. A clan meeting. Then she remembered Snow Kit and stiffened. Hardly daring to breathe, she sniffed her sister. She smelled okay, and she was snoring softly. Moonflower's tongue rasped Blue Kit's ear. Don't worry, she whispered. She's fine. Moonflower's eyes were glazed, as though she hadn't slept at all. I've been checking on her. The queen gently nudged the little white bundle. Snow Kit. Snow Kit growled and wrapped her paw tightly over her muzzle. Don't wake me again. You've been poking me all night. Blue Kit felt a rush of relief. Snow Kit was fine. She nuzzled against Moonflower's cheek and purred. Poppy Dawn was stretching her forepaws and yawning. How's Snow Kit? She's fine. Moonflower mewed. She won't do that again. Poppy Dawn climbed from her nest. Are you coming to the meeting? Snow Kit's eyes shot open and she jumped to her paws. There's a meeting! Blue Kit heaved a sigh of relief. Her sister looked so wriggly that the poppy seeds must have worn off, like Goose Feather had said. Can we go? She mewed. Moonflower nodded wearily. If you behave yourselves. We will, Blue Kit promised. Moonflower got slowly to her paws and padded to the den entrance. Where's Swift Breeze? Snow Kit wondered. Blue Kit saw that Swift Breeze's nest was empty. Leopard Kit and Patch Kit have gone too. I expect they're already in the clearing, Moonflower called over her shoulder as she squeezed through the gap in the brambles. Blue Kit scrambled out after her mother. The early morning sun filtered softly through the trees, encircling the camp. The clan cats were filling the clearing, murmuring excitedly while Pine Star gazed down at them from high rock. Goose Feather sat at the entrance to the fern tunnel, while Feather Whisker weaved between tawny spots and sparrow pelt. Fuzzy Pelt and Robin Wing sat in the shadow of high rock. Blue Kit spotted Stormtail chatting with Windflight. She tried to catch her father's eye, but he was deep in conversation with the gray tabby warrior. The tangle of branches around the fallen tree quivered as Mumblefoot, Weed Whisker, and Lark Song filed out. Hurry, Moonflower whispered. 
She nudged Blue Kid and Snow Kid past Dapplepaw and Whitepaw, who were jostling for best position on the tree stump. Here. Moonflower sat down behind Speckletail and Stonepelt. Now sit still and hold your tongues. Stonepelt looked over his shoulder at them. Come to see your first clan meeting, eh? Blue Kit nodded, relieved to see warmth in the warrior's gaze, then glanced at her mother. Are you sure it's okay for us to be here? She whispered. We're not old enough to catch our own prey. Moonflower nodded. As long as you're quiet. She turned to Stonepelt. Do you know what the meeting's about? Speckletail turned around, answering before Stonepelt could speak. I think Pinestar has something planned for two of our kits. Cold dread suddenly weighted the pit of Blue Kit's stomach. Perhaps Pinestar was going to scold her and Snow Kit for sticking their noses where they didn't belong. She glanced at her sister, fear bristling her pelt, then looked up at Pinestar. But the Thunder Clan leader's gaze was fixed on two other kits. Leopard Kit and Patch Kit were sitting beneath High Rock. The clan had drawn back, leaving an empty space around them. Were they in trouble? Swift Breeze sat beside Adderfang at the edge of the clearing. They couldn't be in trouble. Swift Breeze's eyes glowed with pride, and Adderfang's chest was thrust forward, his chin high as Pine Star addressed the clan. New leaf brings with it new hope and warmth. More important, it brings new kits. The red-brown tom stretched slightly, peering over the clan toward Snow Kit and Blue Kit. I would like to welcome Moonflower and Stormtail's kits to Thunder Clan. They are a little young for a clan meeting, Blue Kit tensed. But I'm glad they're here to see a ceremony that they will one day experience. Blue Kit's heart quickened with excitement as the clan glanced back toward her and Snow Kit. Leopard Kit and Patch Kit. Pine Star drew their attention once more, and all eyes fixed on the two young cats beneath High Rock. You have been with us for six moons and have learned what it is to be a Thunder Clan cat. Today is the day you will begin to learn what it is to be a Thunder Clan warrior. Mews of approval rippled through the crowd as Pine Star went on. Leopard Kit. When her name was called, Leopard Kit stepped forward. Her eyes raised to where Pine Star stood on the edge of High Rock. From this day forward, you shall be known as Leopard Paw. Pine Star turned his gaze to Robin Wing. You will train her, Robin Wing. Mumblefoot was your mentor, and I hope that you will pass on the fine hunting skills he taught you. Robin Wing dipped her head and stepped forward to stand beside her new apprentice. Patch Kit. Pine Star went on. I already see your father's courage shining in your eyes. From now on, you'll be called Patchpaw, and I give you Fuzzy Pelt as your mentor. Listen to him carefully, because though he is young, he is clever enough to teach you how to use your courage wisely. Pleased murmurs spread through the clan. Patchpaw! Swift Breeze's proud mew echoed off High Rock. Leopard Paw! Dapplepaw jumped off the tree stump and weaved her way through the crowd, Whitepaw following. We've already made nests for you, Dapplepaw mewed to the new apprentices. Using some of my moss, Whitepaw pointed out. Blue Kit felt a pang. She was losing her den mates. Won't Swift Breeze miss them? She asked Moonflower. Yes. Her mother's eyes were glazed, but not with tiredness this time. Come on, she meowed huskily. She swept her tail around her two kits and began to usher them back toward the nursery. Can't we congratulate Patchpaw and Leopardpaw? Blue Kit asked, digging her claws into the soft earth. Moonflower nudged her forward with her muzzle. They're busy with their new den mates. We'll be their den mates soon. Snow Kit mewed excitedly. Moonflower's ears twitched. Not for six moons you won't, and only if you've learned not to eat poppy seeds by then. 
Chapter 3 Deep in a dream, Blue Kid pounced at a butterfly, swiping it from the air. As she pinned it to the ground, its wings tickled her nose. Curious to see it fly away, she let it flutter into the air. It jerked away skyward beyond her reach. But something was still tickling her nose. She sneezed and woke up. A short, fluffy tail had strayed from Poppy Dawn's overfilled nest and was twitching against Blue Kit's muzzle. She pawed it away grumpily. Snow Kit's weight was pressed against her spine, making her feel hot and squashed. Blue Kit and Snow Kit weren't the smallest cats in the nursery anymore. Four moons ago, Poppy Dawn had had her kits, two she-cats and a tom called Sweet Kit, Rose Kit, and Thistle Kit. Blue Kit had suggested Thistle Kit's name because he had spiky gray and white fur that stuck up all over the place. Luckily, it was much softer than a real thistle. Snow Kit had named Rose Kit after the pinky orange color of her tail. And Sweet Kit, who was white with tortoiseshell patches, was named after Pine Star's mother, Sweet Briar. At first, it had been fun having more kits to play with, but now Blue Kit felt as if she hardly had room to stretch. Even with Moonflower sleeping in the warrior's den most nights, the nursery felt very crowded. Thistle Kit, Sweet Kit, and Rose Kit were growing fast and forever spilling out of Poppy Dawn's nest. To add to the clutter, Speckletail had kitted two moons ago, and Lion Kit and Golden Kit hardly ever stopped wriggling and mewling. They were quiet now, but as Blue Kit closed her eyes again, Poppy Dawn grunted in her sleep and, disentangling herself from Rose Kit and Sweet Kit, rolled over with a sigh. Thistle Kit rolled after her, rested his chin on his mother's flank, and began to snore loudly. What's the point of trying to sleep anymore? Blue Kit got to her paws and stretched, a shiver running through her long, sleek tail. With leaf fall had come chilly mornings, and though the nursery was snug, thin streams of cold air trickled through the bramble walls. She glanced at Speckletail's nest, envying Lion Kit's thick fur. It ruffled around his neck like a mane. Golden Kit, whose sleek, pale ginger fur made her look much smaller than her brother, stirred beside him and pressed closer to her mother. Trying not to wake anyone, Blue Kit squeezed out of the nursery. She secretly enjoyed having the early morning to herself when the camp was quiet. The pre-dawn sky stretched overhead, soft and gray as a dove's wing. She recognized the scents of sparrow pelt, wind flight, and adder fang, still fresh in the air. They must have just left on dawn patrol. Crisp brown leaves circled down from the trees and landed gently in the cold clearing. She pressed her paws to the ground, squashing the urge to leap up and snatch one as it fell. That was what Kits did. She was nearly an apprentice. Blue Kit breathed deeply opening her mouth to let the scent of the woods wash against the roof of her mouth. The forest smelled musty, rich with decay, giving up its fragrance like fresh-killed prey. Her mouth watered. She longed to be among the trees beyond the gorse barrier. Padding toward it, she sniffed at the tantalizing smells that drifted through the entrance. She stretched her muzzle forward, trying to peer through the tunnel and wondering what lay in the shadows beyond. Do you want to go out? Sunfall's voice made her jump and she spun around guiltily. I was just looking, she mewed. I'll take you if you'd like, the ThunderClan deputy offered. Blue Kit blinked. What about Pine Star? Won't he be angry? Not if you're with me. Should I get Snow Kit? Blue Kit meowed. I bet she'd want to come too. Let Snow Kit sleep. Sunfall told her gently as he padded away through the tunnel. Breathless with excitement, Blue Kit followed, feeling her tail brush the gorse in the ground beneath her paws, smooth from so many paw steps. As she emerged on the other side of the barrier, the scents of the forest flooded her nose and mouth. Leaves, earth, moss, prey. Flavor so rich she could taste them on her tongue. A wind stirred her whiskers. Untainted by the familiar sense of camp, it smelled strange and wild. 
all-around blue kit. Rich leaf fall hues dappled the forest like a tortoiseshell pelt. Bushes crowded the forest floor, shadow-like in the early light. Sunfall led her along a well-trodden path toward the foot of a slope, so steep that Blue Kit had to crane her neck to see the top. We are in the very heart of ThunderClan territory. He glanced upward. But up there, at the top of the ravine, the forest stretches to our borders on every side. Blue Kit blinked. You climb up there? She searched the slope, trying to work out which route her clanmates used to find their way among the rocks and bushes that jutted out above them. This is the easiest path. Sunfall padded to a gap between two massive boulders, where stone and earth had crumbled into a slope. He bounded nimbly up it and leaped onto one of the boulders. Looking down at Blue Kit, he meowed, You try. Blue Kit padded tentatively to the bottom of the rockfall. It was easy to scrabble up the first few tail lengths, but the slope suddenly steepened and her paws started to slip on the loose stones. Heart racing, she made a desperate leap toward the boulder where Sunfall waited, only just managing to claw her way up beside him. Feeling less than dignified, she shook out her fur. It gets easier with practice. Sunfall turned and led her along a muddy gully that weaved along the slope. It stopped at the bottom of another huge boulder. Blue Kit stared in horror. Does he expect me to climb that? Sunfall was gazing up at the smooth rock surface. His eyes narrowed. Can you see the dents and holds where you might get a grip? As Blue Kit scanned the rock, she started to notice chips and cracks in the stone. A dip in one side that would give her something to push against, a chink just above it where she might get a claw hold, a useful chip in the rock beyond that. Would these small cracks be enough to let her scramble to the top? She waited for Sunfall to lead the way, but he motioned her upward with his muzzle. You go first, he meowed. I'll be right behind in case you slip. Blue Kit unsheathed her claws. I won't slip. Crouching back on her haunches, she tensed to jump, her eyes fixed on the first tiny ledge where she might get a grip. Trembling with effort, she leaped and hooked a claw onto the chink, propelling herself upward and pushing against the dip in the rock with her hind paws. She was amazed to find herself already at the next crack, grabbing hold, pushing upward again until, by some miracle, she found herself panting at the top. Peering down the sheer rock, she saw Sunfall. He seemed small on the forest floor below. Had she really jumped so far with just a couple of paw holds? She was level with the treetops surrounding the camp. She could see right into the high branches where squirrels had scampered and teased her all throughout Greenleaf. Gray climb. Sunfall landed silently on the rock beside her. Which way now, do you think? Blue Kit glanced behind her. Bushes and stunted trees jutted out, their roots twining through the rocky soil to hold them fast to the sheer slope. She spotted a steep but well-worn path, which weaved around the trunk of a twisted hazel. That way, she mewed. Without waiting for a reply, she hurried along the track, following it as it steepened, turned back on itself, and began to snake between the boulders studding the crest of the ravine. She was nearly at the top. The forest was only a few tail lengths away. Suddenly, her paws slipped. Panic shot through her like lightning as the earth beneath her claws crumbled and she fell backward, sliding and skidding on her belly down the path. Scrabbling for a grip, she let out a wail. Something soft broke her fall. I've got you. Sunfall wriggled from underneath her and grasped her scruff to steady her. Blue Kit's heart thumped as she swung over the steep drop below. She felt for the ground, her legs shaking, and Sunfall let go as she regained her balance. Sorry, she mewed. I shouldn't have gone so fast. Sunfall flicked her ear gently with his tail. When you're bigger and there's more strength in your hind legs, you can go this way. For now, let's use that path instead. Blue Kit followed his gaze to a stony trail twining upward through a cluster of smaller rocks. She followed him along it, 
letting her paw steps fall in behind his. A tail length from the top, the path ended in a sheer wall of rock that leaned out above them. Blue Kit could smell the heavy scent of forest and see branch tips poking out high above the lip of the ravine. With one leap, Sunfall bounded up and over the edge. Blue Kit took a deep breath and jumped up, reaching with her forepaws to grasp the grassy cliff top, and began to haul herself over the edge. She caught sight of Sunfall leaning forward, his teeth heading for her scruff. I can do it, she puffed before he could grasp her. Her muscles burned with the effort as she dragged herself over the edge and flopped on the soft grass, panting. Well done, Sunfall congratulated her. Catching her breath, Blue Kit glanced down the ravine. The camp was hardly visible beneath the treetops, and the clearing appeared as a pale splash beyond the auburn leaves. She twisted her head to look into the forest. Bushes crowded the edges, and trees stretched away into shadows. Branches creaked and shuddered in the wind. An excited shiver ran down her pelt. Is that where the patrols hunt every day? She whispered. Sunfall nodded. You'll be going with them soon. I want to go with them now. Sunfall tensed suddenly. He was staring into the trees, eyes round. A moment later, they heard the echo of Paul steps pounding eerily from deep within the forest. They drew closer, setting the undergrowth rustling until Blue Kit could make out the shadowy shapes of cats hurtling toward them. She edged nearer Sunfall. Who is it? Dawn Patrol, Sunfall's mew was taut. There's something wrong. Sparrow Pelt exploded from a wall of ferns, his yellow eyes burning through the pre-dawn light. He skidded to a halt at the edge of the ravine. Adderfang, Windflight, and Thrush Pelt stopped hard on his heels. What's wrong? Sunfall demanded. Wind Clan has been stealing our prey, Sparrow Pelt hissed. We must tell Pine Star. He plunged over the edge of the ravine with the rest of his patrol close behind. Let's get back to camp. Sunfall turned and disappeared over the edge after his clanmates. Blue Kit was trembling. Did this mean battle? As she slid her front paws over the rim of the cliff, she paused. The sun was cracking the distant horizon, spilling over the forest and turning the treetops pink. Pride and excitement welled unexpectedly in her belly. This was her territory and her clan was in trouble. She knew with a certainty as hard as rock that she would risk anything to help her clanmates. She half slid, half fell down the steep tumble of rocks, scrabbled down the face of the giant boulder and raced along the path to the rocky slope at the bottom. She was determined not to be left behind. The other warriors had disappeared into the camp by the time she reached the bottom and she pelted through the gorse tunnel, praying she hadn't missed anything. In the clearing, Sparrow Pelt was already sharing his story with Pine Star. The rest of the clan cats, Pelt's bristling, were gathering around them. Stone Pelt and Stormtail padded, gray as shadows from beside the nettle patch. Branches trembled around the fallen tree as Weed Whisker pushed his way out from the elder's den with Lark Song and Mumblefoot. Robin Wing paced in front of the nursery, her ears pricked up straight. Dappletail a warrior for only one moon, but already acting like she was deputy, pushed past Patchpaw, who was padding blearily from the apprentice's den. Get out of the way, this is important, she snapped. Come on, White Eye. White Paw had been given her warrior name at the same time as Dapplepaw. Blue Kit thought it was cruel of Pine Star to name her after the blind, cloudy eye that marred her pretty face. But White Eye had never seemed bothered by it and she followed her denmate now with her usual unruffled air, shrugging apologetically as she passed Patchpaw. Blue Kit, Moonflower called from the fern tunnel. She emerged from the shadows, her eyes round with worry. I've been looking for you. Have you been outside? Her mew was sharp. You know you're not supposed to leave the camp. Blue Kit wanted to explain that Sunfall had taken her, but Goosefeather and Featherwhisker weaved past the silver-gray queen, blocking her view as they hurried from the medicine clearing. 
tail twitching, Swift Breeze swept in front of Blue Kit. Are you coming? Blue Kit nodded and followed. She'd talk to Moonflower later. Pine Star's eyes narrowed as he spoke with the warriors from the patrol. You say there was blood inside our border? Sparrow Pelt nodded. Squirrel blood, and it was fresh. Blue Kit sat down beside Swift Breeze. Will there be a battle? She whispered. Swift Breeze twitched the tip of her tail. I hope not. Snow Kit skidded to a halt beside them, her fur fluffed with excitement. Imagine if there was. Adderfang was pacing in front of the Thunder Clan leader. Wind Clan cats must have killed it this morning and carried it back through four trees to their own territory, he growled. Are you sure it was killed by Wind Clan? Swift Breeze called. Wind Clan scent was everywhere, Thrush Pelt reported. The young warrior looked terrified, his fur sticking on end. We were choking on it. Windflight tipped his head to one side. There was no scent on the bushes, he meowed slowly. It may have just drifted down from the moorland. Drifted? Sparrow Pelt scoffed. Too much of a coincidence, Adderfang snapped. Squirrel blood and clan scent together? They crossed our border and killed Thunder Clan prey. Could anything else have killed the squirrel? Pine Star queried. Was there any sign of a fox? Nothing fresh, Adderfang meowed. Pine Star blinked. But there was fox scent. Sparrow Pelt flexed his claws. There's fox scent everywhere if you sniff for it. Mumblefoot padded stiffly forward. Wind Clan has done this before, he reminded them. Stone Pelt nodded. Leaf Fall always makes them nervous. The rabbits start to go to ground when the forest is still prey rich. This won't be the first time hunger has driven Wind Clan past four trees and over our border. And it won't be the last, Sparrow Pelt added darkly. Swift Breeze swished her tail through the air. They can't be hungry. Leaf Fall's not yet ended. Why didn't they steal from River Clan or Shadow Clan? Blue Kit ventured. They share borders with them. Adderfang swung his yellow gaze toward her. They probably think having four trees between the moor and our territory makes them safe from anything we might do in revenge. Or they think we're easy to steal from. Stormtail, who had been watching through half-closed eyes from the edge of the clearing, stepped forward. If they're willing to steal prey before Leaffall has ended, how much will they steal in the darkest days of Leaf Bear? We must warn them off now, before they think they have the right to help themselves to our prey whenever they like. Blue Kit tingled with pride. Her father was a true warrior, ready to fight to defend his clan. Pine Star shook his head slowly, then turned and bounded up onto High Rock. There will be no fighting yet, he ordered. Stormtail flattened his ears. You're going to let them steal from us? He growled. There isn't enough proof that it was Wind Clan, Pine Star answered. Adderfang let out a low hiss. No one saw a Wind Clan cat, and no scent markers were left behind, Pine Star pointed out. Only because they're cowards, Sparrow Pelt yowled. Murmurs of agreement rippled around the clan. Pine Star turned to Goosefeather. Has Star Clan given any warning? Goosefeather shook his head. Nothing, he reported. Then cowards or not, Pine Star growled. I won't risk a battle on so little evidence. But I'll warn all the clans at the gathering tomorrow that we are being extra vigilant. He stared down at Sunfall. Organize extra patrols along the Four Trees border. If you see a Wind Clan patrol, warn them off. He narrowed his eyes. With words, not claws. Sunfall nodded. We'll reset the markers, too. Blue Kit saw the fur ripple along her father's spine as he padded over to sit with Adderfang. 
The two warriors bent their heads in quiet conversation, while Sparrow Pelt circled them, his tail bristling. Will they go and fight Wind Clan anyway? She whispered to Moonflower. The silver gray she cat shook her head. No. Snow Kit plucked at the ground beside them. I would. Blue Kit wrinkled her nose. We don't know if Wind Clan stole our prey. But they might have, Snow Kit insisted. It's better to be safe than sorry. I'd go and rip them to shreds so they'd never dare steal from us again. Moonflower looked at her. Even if your leader told you not to? A clan leader's word is law, remember. Blue Kit put her head on one side, puzzled. Shouldn't a warrior put the clan above everything? What if Pine Star's wrong? Moonflower smoothed Snow Kit's ruffled fur with her tail. Pine Star will always do whatever is best for Thunder Clan. Don't forget that he is guided by Star Clan. I suppose. Snow Kit looked disappointed. Blue Kit stared at the ground, her mind buzzing. How could leaders always be right? Would they still be right if Star Clan didn't guide them? Patchpaw was padding back to the apprentice's den. It would have been our first battle, he sighed. Leopardpaw bounded ahead of him, spinning and dropping into an attack crouch. We would have shredded them. The clan began to wander away, but Pine Star, still sitting on High Rock, let out a soft call. All eyes turned back to the Thunder Clan leader. There is something else, he began. Blue Kit gazed up at High Rock, curiosity fluttering in her belly. I want to appoint two new apprentices. Who? Then she realized, it must be us, she hissed to Snow Kit. But Snow Kit's eyes were already sparkling with anticipation. I didn't think he'd do it today, Moonflower was hurrying toward them. She sounded flustered. Look at you. Blue Kit stared in dismay at her pelt, dusty and mud-stained from her climb up and down the ravine. Quick, wash. It was too late. Blue Kit and Snow Kit. Pine Star was beckoning them forward with his tail. Swift Breeze stepped aside. Mumblefoot and Sunfall backed away to make space beneath High Rock. Snow Kit was already scampering forward, but Blue Kit hesitated, ashamed of her scruffy pelt and uncomfortably conscious of the gaze of her clanmates. Go on, whispered Moonflower, nudging Blue Kit forward. Your pelt doesn't really matter. Pride was lighting her eyes. It's your spirit he wants to welcome into Thunder Clan. Taking a deep breath, Blue Kit followed her sister and stood below High Rock, hoping no one could see her legs trembling. Pine Star gazed down. You have been with us for six moons. Today you will start your training. Your father has been loyal to Thunder Clan and is a brave warrior. May you both tread in his paw steps. Blue Kit glanced at her father. He'd stopped muttering with Adderfang and was watching intently. Blue Kit's legs trembled harder. Why did she have to look such a mess? Snow Kit. Pine Star's mew rang out in the cold dawn air as the sun began to turn the camp a rosy pink. Snow Kit lifted her muzzle. From this day forward, you shall be known as Snowpaw. As Snowpaw puffed out her chest, Pine Star scanned the warriors watching from beneath High Rock. Sparrow Pelt, he meowed. The dark brown tabby looked sharply up at him, as though surprised. You will mentor Snowpaw. Train her to be a fine warrior. Blinking. Sparrow Pelt stepped forward and touched his muzzle to Snow Kit's head. Blue Kit, Pine Star went on. Until you earn your warrior name, you will be Blue Paw. Your mentor will be Stone Pelt. Stone Pelt padded to her side. You're still not allowed in the warrior's den, he teased, nudging her head with his nose. Blue Paw could hardly believe it. 
She was going to sleep in the apprentice's den tonight.